Some time ago, I did a review of what I refer to as the Lixada Tower Stove. Now, I have the smaller titanium version. If you're interested in hearing more about this stove and how the two of them compare, keep watching. So actually, I have a couple of videos where I use the stainless steel version of the Lixada Tower Stove. And it was after those videos that viewers commented that there were two other stoves that I may be interested in taking a look at. One is a larger version of the stainless steel stove, and I haven't purchased that one yet, but it is on my list to purchase at some point. And the other one is the smaller titanium version, the one we're going to take a look at today. So what I want to do is go down to the tabletop where I'll give you the specifications for the titanium stove. We'll bring in the stainless the steel stove to just compare for size and weight and that type of thing. I have a few interesting ways of how you might use both of these stoves that I have not shown before and then I have one other stove I want to bring in for comparison. So before we begin I just want to let you know that I will be putting all the specifications for this stove as well as the original stainless steel version in the video description below this video as well as the links to where you can purchase this version on AliExpress and that's where I purchased this one. Okay so when the stove arrived this is what I received a nice little stuff sack typical of a lot of the stoves that do come out of China and uh, everything is self-contained inside and the first First thing that impressed me was just how light this stove is. So let me take it out of the sack and show you what we have. Set the sack aside. So here's the entire stove and it is considerably smaller as you'll see in a minute when I bring the original back in. But this total package that I have in my hands weighs in at 4.8 ounces or 131 grams. That's pretty light. In fact, what I want to do is I'm going to give you the specifications or at least the weights for a couple of other stoves that are made of titanium that are also wood gasifier stoves. And yes, I know there's some debate about whether this is in fact a wood gasifier stove and I'll address that in a few minutes time. 4.8 ounces, that's pretty light. Now let's assemble the stove so I can give you some specifications. So here are the pot stands. You have the two internal pieces. Flip that upside down and you can see, I think right there where it says Luxata on the stove. The two pieces are the, I call this feed chamber, tower. It's what, the part of the reason why I refer to this as a tower stove. And then of course the burn plate and holes on the secondary area. So for secondary uh, gasification or secondary combustion, simply drop it through and drop it in. And that's, that's all there is to it to make this work. I tend not to use the crossbars on top. I don't feel it's necessary. I feel that there is enough ventilation at the top that putting a pot directly on is not in any way restricting airflow. You can choose to use them or not use them. I'll show you what that looks like with them on and they go on easy enough. And what I really like about it is just how easy they do go on so that if you've got the fire going and now you wanna put the pot stands on, then you're not gonna to have to struggle to get them on. And one of the nice things, because this is a cylindrical design is it doesn't work. Unlike flat plate sided stoves, this stove does not warp. And in fact, none of the cylindrical or circular stoves that I have warps, regardless if they're stainless steel or titanium. Okay, so what I want to do is give you some measurements. So from the bottom to the very top, it comes in at 7 and 1 16th of inches or 18 centimeters. The diameter across the stove actually be across the base because that's what's important if you're trying to see about what pot you can fit this in. So the diameter is 3 and 7 eighths inches or 10 centimeters. It has a burn chamber height, and I measured that from the bottom of the fire box, the fire grate, to the very top, a burn chamber height of 6 and 7 sixteenths inches, or 15.8 centimeters. So you can see it's a kind of a small stove, but like I mentioned in the original uh, review of the stainless steel version, you don't have to keep wood short. You don't have to keep them below those secondary airports in the stove. You can fill this right up to just below the top of the stove and let it burn down. It will determine 
whether or not the stove would gasifies and pyrolysis occurs, but again, we'll talk more about that in a moment. So let's bring in the original stainless steel version and you can see just how much of a size difference there is. I mean, it's not hugely significant, but it is quite significant and it does affect what type of a pot that you can store this one inside, inside of its st stuff sack. So quickly, I'll give you the specifications for the stainless steel version just for comparison, but we won't spend any more time on this one. So the stainless steel version comes in at nearly twice the weight at 7.2 ounces or 204 grams. It is seven and seven eighths inches to the very top. You can see that's not a lot taller than the titanium version. It is four and a half inches across the bottom or 11.5 centimeters and it has a burn chamber depth of seven and one sixteenth or 18 centimeters. So it is a bit taller a bit wider and about 40% heavier than the one that I have. Now in a second, I'm gonna roll in the way I carry these and what pots I carry them in because I think you'll find that of some interest. Um, I want to show you now a hack. I don't know if I call it a hack or a way of using these that's not apparent in the original design. And this came out of, of comments that viewers asked, could this be done? I've tested it, and yes, it works. It works well. All right, so let me set the stoves up for that. Okay, we'll start with the titanium version of the stove, and I'll show it to you in both versions, titanium and stainless steel, because when I bring the stainless steel version back in, I have another stove that I want to compare it with just for your consideration. So what's that hack? Well, there's a couple things that I had considered. People asked, you know, can we do something about the height? Can the height be cut down somehow to make it more stable? By the way, I haven't found this to be very much unstable. It's all about what pot size you use with it and how you set it on the ground to make sure that it's going to be remain stable on some solid surface. But uh, something that I did consider and make it look a little bit more like the uh, solo stove or the bush buddy was to simply cut this off. Cut it off at a height somewhere where the feed port is maybe halfway down the feed port and it should reach this about the same overall height as the Bush Buddy. Uh, I decided not to do that and I'll show you the reason why. I can make it even lighter and more compact this way. All you have to do is set the base aside for a second, take the burn chamber out, set the top part aside and drop the burn chamber back in. Now, look how small this stove has become. And I haven't put the weight, or I haven't measured the weight of just this combination, but I'll do that and I'll put it on the screen right now, as well as in the video description. But now, look what we have. We have what looks very much like a solo stove or any other wood gasification stove. It is a double wall stove where air can move up the outside of the inner chamber and be reintroduced to the burn chamber at the top through those holes. So, can you use it like this? Well, the, what's obviously missing is some type of a pot stand. So, I did some playing around and I took the original pot stands, the ones that came with it, and I'll show you what I've done. By the way, these, for whatever reason, they've designed them so that you can use them upside down. Maybe make just makes it easier. But what I did is I took, and probably this makes it show the better. I widened up the part that goes over the edge of the stove. It doesn't affect how it will work on the full assembly of the stove, but I wanted to make sure that it would fit on this rim. And it does, uh, it's, you know, it does. It fits in, it's stable, it stays there, it's not bad, but I thought I could do a little bit better. So if you want to use it this way and just widen that up so it fits, it doesn't move, and that's really all you're asking for. And it does have sufficient clearance for work with the pot, at least the pot that I'll be showing you in a second that I brought with it. But I had something else in my kit anyway that I thought might work even better, and I think that it does. So you can see that snugs right on there. Okay, so what I have is a site a set of titanium cross pieces that you can use with an alcohol stove. Originally designed, or at least the original design, was meant for use with the Evernew alcohol stove, which is titanium, but it can be used with a Trangia, and it can be used with any of the Evernew knockoff stoves as well. And it's meant to be put together like this, and then dropped in on top of the stove. These are very inexpensive. You can purchase them on AliExpress and I'll provide a link for that as well. And there are a few different designs. So how did I end up using it on this stove? Well, one of the things you'll notice, and I'll have to show you this hopefully up close, 
is along the top, there are a series of six notches, three to a side, and the outside notches happen to line up just perfectly with this rim. Uh, it worked fine without modification, but what I did do is just took a round file and rounded it because they are kind of triangular or V-notched, rounded it ever so slightly so that it will set on that outside rim perfectly. So let me assemble it that way. Sits right on, no sliding from side to side, and now I have a little bit more clearance, a little bit more height than I had with the ones that came with the stove. Enough that I don't have to worry about any dampening effect that might occur from putting a pot on. In addition, I still have these for use with an alcohol stove. And I am going to show you how you can use the whole stove with an alcohol stove without the necessity of using some type of a pot stand. I'll show you that in one moment. All right, so what I want to do is just bring the stainless steel version back in. And I'm going to set it up the way I just set up the titanium version because there is another stove that I want you to see. So once again, take it apart, remove the burn chamber, set aside the top piece, and drop it in. So it looks, again, very much the same. Now, the crossbars that come with the stainless steel version, I've never been a fan of using them for when the uh, stove is assembled at full height. But if you turn these upside down, they sit on top of the stove quite nicely. Uh, could be better in terms of airflow, but it's not bad. It does work, especially with wood pellets, which will, again, that's something we'll talk about in a moment. You could modify and come up with something that give you a little bit more height off of the top of this. And I've shown how to do that with the stainless steel rulers that you can pick up at Walmart and I'm sure other places, very inexpensive. And you can set them into a, or turn them into a set of crossbars very easily. And they'll give you about a one inch clearance off the top of, well, whatever stove you want to set them up for. But take a look at this. Does anybody recognize this stove? This is the Solo light wood gasification stove, which of course in and of itself is a knockoff of the original Bush Buddy stove, as most people are aware. And to set that up, of course, all you're doing is taking the pot stand out, pot stand integrated feed port out, and putting it on top. The size is virtually identical in almost every way. Feed chamber size, actually the feed chamber is a little smaller in the Solo than it is in the Luxata. But you have a very competitive set of stoves. This is heavier though, and I will put those comparisons on the screen just so you can see, and of course in the show notes. So if you're looking at purchasing one of the Solo stoves, and I recommend them, they're a good stove, or the original Bush Buddy, but you're deterred by the cost or the price of them, then you could purchase one of these Lexata tower stoves and use it like this. The only thing that you need to do is come up with a, well, you may not need to. Uh, I just recommend you consider purchasing or making a set of crossbars that will go across this. The little titanium ones I showed you a minute ago intended for alcohol stoves are not wide enough to work on top of this. Okay, so there is one thing that I do want to show you about this stoves. Of course, the Solo has an integrated base plate on the bottom that protects whatever surface you're using it on. And, uh, you know, I did have a concern with this. I will I do have a concern with the stove in that it doesn't work well with wood pellets. And that's because of the large fire grate that's inside. A lot of pellets fall down inside, easy enough to modify. And we've talked about that in the past. And I'm sure that uh, um, there are videos on my channel, which will talk about how to modify this for use with wood pellets. Because once you do, it's very effective but this isn't the subject of the video. So what is the way for modifying this stove? It works identical for this stove. Now, there's a couple of different ways. You can get a plate that has some smaller diameter holes in it, because as you'll notice, this is an open base stove, as is the titanium, and I'll bring that back in in a minute because there's a reason for that. This is an open base stove, so of course you do have to be conscious of where you place this stove, make sure it's on a fire safe surface. Uh, but the wood pellets fall through this quite readily. You lose a lot of them. So they, they will clump up, but you lose a lot of them before the clumping occurs. So something inside to prevent the pellets from dropping through is recommended. I did take a piece of lightweight steel uh, plating that holes in it, and I put that together and dropped it inside. It works well, but here's something that works even better. If I can get it out, because that's down inside. 
I went to the dollar store and picked up one of these small strainers, kitchen strainers. It had a handle on this end, just a little nub on this end for laying across a bowl or a cup or whatever. Just happens to be a perfect fit down inside. So now I can put wood pellets on this with no concern about them falling through. And that convex or that rounded dome shape allows a lot of airflow through the pellets. And yes, you could use it the other way, but I, I think it works best when it's dome shaped like that. That same dollar store screen also works in the Solo. So now you can use wood pellets in the Solo as well. So that was just a little extra tip on using the Solo stove with wood pellets. Okay, now I did say I wanted to bring the titanium version back in for a reason. So let me set it up in it is regular full height. So once again, burn chamber drops down through the top. That drops on top of the base. Here's what's nice about the titanium version. Again, it still has an open base on it, so you still have to be conscious of where you place the stove in terms of fire safety, but the holes in the base are considerably smaller than they are in the stainless steel version, and this will hold wood pellets. Now, a few do drop through, and I'll demonstrate that uh, when we get outside with the stove. A few will drop through, but most of them will clump up inside and not drop through, and now you have a stove that will work well with wood pellets. So when we get outside, I'll talk more about burning wood pellets in this stove. All right, what's left to compare? Oh yes, I wanted to bring in the cook kits that I've assembled and uh, we'll just talk about how they work together as a system. Okay, so I backed the camera up just a little bit so I can get both of these in frame and show you the contents. So this is the original Luxata stove setup that I have carried for quite a while and you'll probably recognize this pot. This is the stainless steel Camel Wheel 1.2 liter pot that I I guess you might say I raved about. I really like this pot. This was such a great value. As an alternative to the Zebra, uh, 12 centimeter Zebra Billy Pot, this is great. It works both as a kettle and as a pot. And it has a nice huge D-ring and a folding bale and butterfly handles. What more can you ask for? And inexpensive. So I do have uh, a couple reviews on this and one long-term review where I showed how it's, well, you can see. You can see just how dirty this is. This got a lot of use. 1.2 liters is to the very limit realistically. 900 mils is probably its functional uh, amount that it can hold. And there are graduation marks on the inside, which is also a nice plus. Okay, so I'm just going to, I only brought that in just because I wanted to show you how I carry the stove. Now, the only issue I have, and the stainless steel version of the Luxata tower stove does come with a stuff sack and I have it around somewhere. The problem is, is when you put it inside with the stuff sack, it sits high enough that it bounces the lid up just a little bit. So I felt I wasn't bothered by the fact that this goes down inside the stove. It's usually not that dirty, doesn't dirty up the inside of my pot that I worry about it, but you can see it fits in there nicely. It's a nice combination. So I have shown that before. Getting my top of my table dirty. Okay, so this is what I want to show you today. So this is where I have the titanium version of the Luxata Tower Stove, and this is a small top pot. This one is from Tom Shoe, but it is identical to ones from Luxata. It is a 900 milliliter pot, functionally maybe 750 to 800 milliliters because 900 does come right to the very top. Again, a nice bale on it with a little notch for making the short centers a stand-up ring on top so you can get the pot lid off, does have ventilation holes here, and the swing-out butterfly style handles, different style but just as functional. Um, you know, a nice little pot and again not very expensive but very lightweight and great for one person. So what do I have inside of here? I have the, uh, the stove, the crossbars are now dropped down inside. So this does fit inside of that pot with the stuff sack, which is great. But there's still room that it can be used and to store things inside of the stove itself, the wood stove itself. So I have that set of pot stands I showed you a minute ago for the alcohol stove. And I have an alcohol stove in there. Again, another Tom Shoe or Tom... Or I, I think this one is Tom Shoe. Could be Ty Luxata. I think they're sister companies. Which one is this? 
Tom shoe. So this one is a Tom shoe. This is a knockoff of the Evernew titanium stove. Uh, it does not have a wick inside. And you've probably seen other reviews if you're interested in these stoves. You've probably looked at them. It does not have a wick inside, so its bloom time is considerably longer than it is on the Evernew. But when I've done some run and some test times, and I've watched other people talk about their test times, overall, if I like this, even though it's not at its full uh, full performance levels, and let it run, I get about the same boil time because once this starts going, it seems to catch up very quickly to the Evernew, and it seems to run a little longer, obviously because of the delayed start. And that's where these pot stands. The reason I ended up carrying these in the uh, kit was for this stove so that it could be set on top and it works well I mean I can still and do still use it like this but there is another way of using this stove with it with the titanium stove that I want to show you now so lots of room inside as I mentioned so once again let's take this out so I can and it does work use it like that this is the top half of the stove, which would be your pot rest, and it fits down over top of the alcohol stove and gives me not quite two inches, about one and a half to one and three quarter inches pot clearance, which you can see works very well. So I don't have to use the crossbars. I can use the top half of the stove if I'm carrying it. Now, as I mentioned, I may decide not to carry the top half of the stove so that it works as a wood gasifier. By the way, you can do the same thing with the stainless steel version and whatever alcohol stove you're using. It is going to be a little higher of an offset, but I have used it that way very effectively. So yes, you can do that. Okay, so what have I shown you? I have shown you the assembly of the stove, how it works together with this pot and this alcohol stove and other alcohol stoves. I have used it with a few others as well. I compared it in size and weight to the original stainless steel version, and I compared that with the original Solo Light. So all there's left to do now is to get outside and do some demonstrations, which I will do with wood and with wood pellets. So for both demonstrations I'll be doing, the first with wood and the second with wood pellets, I'll be doing inside of this fire pit because of course I know that I have a fire safe surface underneath the stove. As I mentioned, neither this stove does not have a bottom on it, so you're going to have to be cautious, but whatever you set it down on to make sure it's not combustible because hot coals will fall through. Okay, so what I have done is I've preloaded the stove with some wood. This is literally off of a pine branch that just came down recently in a windstorm that we had that I, I cut a section off and just split up. What I found is I was picking sticks up and trying to break off of uh, some dead wood off of branches, and I found it was just too damp to, to trust trying to get it going. Small wood stoves don't like damp wood, at least until they get a good uh, amount of heat going in them. Then you can start putting in a few da damp pieces because they'll dry out in time. Now, I could have loaded this stove with wood just to the level of the secondary gas ports. I would have got gasification sooner, but of course my fuel load would have burnt out that much faster. With this much wood, I won't get gasification until it burns down to the level of the secondary jets. But uh, you know what? That's not necessary. It doesn't have to be a wood gasifying stove. You will see that when I do wood pellets, but for the demonstration with wood, not so important. So I have, as I mentioned, preloaded everything vertical. Don't overload your stove. You can see I still have a fair amount of room inside, which is important for airflow to come up through the stove, and yet they're still below the bottom of the holes at the top of the stove. I forgot to bring with me the crossbars that would go on top of this, so I am going to be setting the pot directly on. Sometimes that has a bit of an effect, sometimes it does not. It does not seem to on the stainless steel, and well, we'll see what happens when we get going. As long as the fire is going well, then smoke or dampening effect should be minimal. So to get this thing going, just because it is a little suspect in terms of its uh, dampness, I am going to use a fire plug that I have there we go. Give that a chance to catch the fire plug. Did I put it out? I put the fire plug out, and that doesn't happen very often. Let me actually pull it apart. That might actually help. There we go. All right, it's catching. Boy, even the fire plugs want to give me a hard time today. 
And as the fire plug catches on, I did also curl off some uh, shavings off of that same piece of pine, which I'm going to put on top for a top lit up draft type of burn. So it'll burn from the top down. The advantage is it will last longer than if I lit it from the bottom without having to refuel. Eventually you have to refuel and that's just the nature of it. But if I get a bit of a fire going on top, which I will try now with these curls, then coals should fall down inside and get the rest of the fuel going. And once that's going, it'll be well established. So even though I'm not going to be able to take advantage of the gasification aspects of this stove because of the height I have the fuel, I will be able to take advantage of the chimney effect that goes along with the height of this stove. So that's one of the nice things about this stove is that it will create a chimney effect that will allow it to catch on and burn quite hot after, after it does catch on, of course. Boy, we're struggling even here. It is going, but it is struggling a little bit. Let me throw another piece on, then I want to talk to you about a few things I failed to mention or didn't get around to mentioning in the opening half of this video. So one more little piece here, and I've got a few more I'm going to need yet. Okay, so the, the most obvious question that I should have addressed right from the get-go was, will this stove fit inside of a 750 milliliter pot? either a titanium one like the Tokes or the Tom Shoe Luxata ones, or ones like the GSI or the Pathfinder? And the answer is, unfortunately, no, it won't. The diameter of the stove right at this point is identical to the diameter of those cups. It prevents it from sliding down inside. It wouldn't take much, just a couple millimeters, but that's all. But it will not fit down inside. That's unfortunate. If that's important to you and you like this style of stove, there are two stoves that I can talk about for half a second that are very similar, but much more expensive. They are, of course, the Tokes stoves. The Tokes are the originals with this design. Luxata Tom Shoe did copy off of them, but uh, that I think they've made a few improvements improvements we'll talk you know with this stove over it I don't have the tokes to compare against so uh, it's not worth trying to explain to you what the differences are without having one of them with it tokes come available in two sizes and what's interesting is the small tokes is pretty much the same size as this stove but just that small a bit uh, narrower in diameter, allowing it to sit inside of the 750 milliliter pot. Very similar in height, very similar overall. Uh, heavier than the stove for whatever reason, and I'll put the specs in the show notes if you're interested, but just a slight bit uh, narrower across, allowing it to sit inside that smaller pot. The Tokes large version in titanium is almost identical inside to the stainless steel version of this stove, which is also very interesting because the stainless steel version of the Luxata stove actually comes in lighter. Not by much, but it comes in lighter than the titanium version. I guess what I'm saying is I'm not sure why I'd pay nearly twice the price for a stove that uh, doesn't give me that much of a benefit in terms of either size or weight but that's of course a personal choice i'm quite happy with these ones maybe a few more little pieces on top as the fire burns down i'm going to let the fire really get established before i put on the pot on top so that may take a few minutes and i may cut away to allow that to happen uh, just because i know there will be some dampening effect of the flames there is with all wood stoves because it's going to alter the airflow. Right now we have clean air throw through the stove, no restrictions at the top and unrestricted at the bottom. But once I put, I'm just trying to create some shadow so you can see what's taking place. You can see the flames moving down into the wood even now. But once I put the pot on, it's going to affect the airflow and there will be some smoke until the airflow readjusts itself to the new uh, restrictions. Okay, what I think I'll do is I'll just give it a couple seconds here off camera and I'll bring it back and uh, then we'll put the pot on for a demonstration. Okay, it's been about five minutes since I turned the camera off and quite a bit of fuel has been consumed down into the stove. In fact, I can see uh, gasification taking place at this lower level. I don't think I'll be able to show you that with the camera. There is still fuel in the upper level being consumed, but you can see it's burning very cleanly. Remember, this is pine. Pine will smoke more than hardwood regardless. So. 
Uh, that's not unexpected. And right down at the bottom, you can see where a few coals fell through. And that's why I mentioned it's important to see if I can get the kettle out of the way. Uh, it's important to make sure that you have this on a fire safe surface. But let's just see what this will do when I put the kettle on top. A little damp. Okay, a little bit of dampening effect taking place. Not too bad, but a little bit. That's expected to take place. Might actually have been better had I remembered to bring the crossbars with me that go with this stove. My experience with the stainless steel version is it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. This one, it might actually make a little bit of a difference. But as you can see, it's not bad. There was a little bit of dampening, but not near as bad as some stoves can be. So it does still have good airflow. Okay, so that's basically all I wanted to show you for this demonstration with wood. Now I have to let this fuel load burn out so that I can set it back up with wood pellets. And that's when I'll bring it back. All right, we're back for the second demonstration. Took a few minutes. One of the nice things, of course, about titanium is once the fuel load had gotten down to a point where I could dump the stove and then wash it off with a little bit of water just to make sure it was out, the titanium cooled off extremely quickly. So let's get this going. So what I did this morning before coming out was measured out one full cup of hardwood pellets that I know will go into the top part or this this portion of the Luxata stove just below those secondary gas ports. Let me pour those in. Little trick that I've learned as well is if you do it while it's on the ground like it is right now then fewer of them will fall through because they will start to bunch up. That I didn't lose any of that time. That's great. Okay. Now bring the base back into frame. Drop this down inside. I am going to put the crossbars on now uh, just because it's easier and less likely to burn my fingers. And to light these, quite often I use alcohol or alcohol gel, but I'm just going to use a little bit of cotton ball soaked in Vaseline to throw on top and some wood chips. It's a, you know, it's a legitimate way of doing this and works nearly as well, we'll say, as does alcohol. So I have some shavings I just made here that I'll throw in on top of this. It'll take a few minutes that for the wood pellets to engage anyway. Uh, this actually just makes things go a little quicker. And that's the reason I'm doing it this way today. And uh, yep, yeah, things are taken off nicely. I don't think I'll need a whole lot. I have. I don't do this very often. Most of the time I do use alcohol, but I think somebody had mentioned, why are you wasting your alcohol doing this when you could be just doing it like I'm doing it right now? And they're, they're absolutely right. Most of the time it was just for expediency to make sure that the pellets got going quickly and cleanly. But this works just as well as alcohol and you don't waste your alcohol. Alcohol is a bit of a finite resource. This isn't, I can go around making shavings off of sticks all day long. All right, I can, pellets are not engaged yet. It's gonna take a few minutes for that to occur. So rather than make you wait, I will just turn the camera off for now. I'll bring you back when the pellets are engaged and we'll put the pot of water on the top and see what happens. Okay, it's been a couple minutes. The pellets are well engaged now and I repositioned the camera so that you could see the gasification that's taking place inside at the level of combustion just below the secondary ports. So you can see the air being drawn in and igniting the wood gases that are being generated there. So a nice, clean, smokeless burn. This is, in this, at least in this configuration, this is acting perfectly as a wood gas stove. Now let me reposition the camera back and we'll see what happens when I put a pot on top. All right, I've repositioned the camera once again and I've come down to as low as I can get, right almost at the level of the stove. So you can see the flames coming up out of the stove, very nice and clean. This looks at least as nice in operation as my solo light does. I would love to compare it against some of the more expensive stoves that are made out of titania, which, by the way, I will give you the specifications and the prices for in the video description underneath. But I'm so happy with the way this is working right now. 
I can't imagine why I'd pay any more than I did for this. But we haven't put the pot on yet, so let's put the pot on, see what happens. Nothing, or at least nothing bad. No dampening down of the flames whatsoever. There's a little bit of a draft or a little bit of a breeze coming through that's dragging some of the flame away. Windscreen would take care of that easy enough. But that, that's, to my mind, perfect. That's exactly what you want from a wood gasification stove. And with one cup of pellets, this goes, well, I've done some tests before. I can get 29 minutes of active flame with one cup of hardwood pellets. And then I found that it will continue to either simmer the water or heat for grilling, if you want, for up to 45 minutes. I left the pot on after the flames went out during one of my tests, and it was just a slow simmer for a full 45 minutes. Well, 45 minutes from the time I lit the stove, so once it went past boil, flame out, usable heat up until the 45-minute point. Now, in fact, my kettle's already starting to come to a boil here right now. I can see steam coming out of the spout. And why don't I make use of this hot water to have some coffee, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts on the titanium wood gas stove that I refer to as the tower stove from Lixada. So uh, it does everything the stainless steel one does, except that it's a little bit smaller and half the weight. A little bit more expensive, true, but much cheaper than a lot of other small wood gasifier stoves. And yes, Mark, it's not truly a wood gasifier stove when it's in, in this full height configuration. But as you saw, if I use just the lower portion, the burn chamber, without the top portion, it is a true wood gasification stove. So, uh, you know, I haven't put the weight in. I haven't measured the weight without the top half, but I'm going to do that, and I'll put that in the show notes or the video description below because I think you'll find this is likely the lightest wood gas stove on the market. I do have another one as I mentioned that I'll be reviewing soon but this has got to be one of the lightest if not the lightest on the market without that top piece. But you kind of deny yourself some real functionality if you don't take that top piece along with you so it's worth a little bit of extra weight regardless if you decide to use it or not. Okay, if you have any comments or any questions about the Luxata Titanium Tower Stove, as I've come to call them, then please put those in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions for future stove reviews or other videos you'd like to see me do, put those in the comments section below. But as always, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.